students of the class of 2018. For those of you who, not, who have not yet had the pleasure of meeting, my name is S.J. Munsey, and I currently serve as a senior class of president. These last few years were luckily some of the most unique, most memorable, and honestly, most stressful years of your lives yet. Right now, sitting in this stadium, your time at Cornell probably feels like a blur. Many of you can't wait until tomorrow when we can finally add the letters BS or PhD after your names. Some of you want this ch chapter to end so that you can start your summer plans as soon as possible. To a certain extent, most, if not all of us, are ready to take our next steps. But we wouldn't be who we are today without our time at Cornell. The classes, the memories, the people, they shaped you and have changed you, hopefully for the better. And so even though we are excited for this week in the past, let us take a few minutes to travel down the proverbial memory lane together. Remember the first time you stepped onto this campus full of anticipation and excitement? For many of you, that was the first time you were living away from home. But as I'm sure you quickly realized, you weren't alone. You met your roommates, learned with your classmates, and you found your best friends. These are the people who watched you as you bite into your first bagel sandwich at CTV. They were the ones who photographed you during your first visit, visit to an Ithacan Gorge. They were the people cheering loudly with you as you showed your line of faithful spirit. They are your Cornell memories. Think back to when you pulled your first all-nighter at Olin Library, or for my fellow Kenny's, Olin Hall. <laughs> I'm sure it's something you probably don't really want to remember, because that was a pretty beautiful experience. But somehow, by some miracle, you survived. You passed your test. You completed your paper. You finished your problem set. After surviving that all nighter, you realized that you could do anything. That is your Cornell memory. Cornell gave you some hard times, but you had some great moments here too. Without Cornell, you never could have sang your heart out at your first slope day. You never, never would have taken and hopefully passed your first wine scores. You never could have gone to the farmer's market or eaten at the downtown chili cook-off. These are your Cornell memories. Now, I'm saying things that may hold true for the average graduating Cornellian, but what about the significant events that happened to you, a student of the Cornell 150th graduating class? What makes you different from the other Cornell alumni whose ranks you're about to join? Well, you witnessed the first solar eclipse seen across the entire contiguous United States in almost 100 years. You experienced the powerful leadership of many inspiring university presidents. You made your voice heard in an impactful United States presidential election. And don't let me forget the most important memory of all. You lived through Cornell's first and second snow days in 24 years. I asked a few fellow graduates to be to tell me their favorite memories at Cornell. Here are some of the answers that I heard. Ithaca's beauty, the education, Cornell hockey, Cornell cabs, well, at least you have something to show for the many miles we have walked here, the dining halls, the weather, <laughs> seeing snow for the first time, magical mushrooms, mischievous molts, which, for those of you who do not know, is a class offer here, don't worry. <laughs> and finally, the people. You know from your time here that people shape an experience. The people at Cornell helped you through your bouts of home, homesickness. The people here <coughs> celebrated with you when you walk, received your first internship offer. They watched TV shows with you, studied with you for prelim exams, and will probably be some of your closest friends for years to come. They are your ultimate Cornell memory. Now I mentioned a lot of Cornell memories. What you do with these memories, however, is entirely up to you. With the degrees we are about to receive comes a certain responsibility. It is our job to spread what we have learned at Cornell with others. We must use our education to change the world. Now, with the limited wisdom that I have as a fellow student, I can admit that this won't be easy. But that is our duty to society. How we use our education will show the real value of our time at this institution. I encourage all of us to remember this as we enter the next chapter of our lives. 
We are all strong and capable leaders, and now is our time to lead. Earning your Cornell degree wasn't easy. As a fellow student, I feel pretty confident in saying that. But all the hard work, the countless hours, the late nights, the stress, they were worth it. Because Cornell is the prequel to the incredible success that is about to come into your life. And years from now, if you ever miss these amazing memories, just know that you can always come back for a visit. You can walk around Ithaca and visit your professors. You can rediscover your favorite spots on campus. You can climb the clock tower and hear the chimes master play Cornell's alma mater as you look far above Cayuga's waters. And so, to wrap this up, I hope that the next chapter of your life brings you success, happiness, and a lot more sleep. Thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2018. part tomorrow when everyone's dressed in their gown. So I must see this class that everyone tells me is so good looking and dynamic. So if you are a graduate to be of the class of 2018, stand up. Get to your feet. It's a true honor to be with you all today. And I just want to take a moment first to salute the faculty and the administration and the staff here. My mother is a teacher. And the diligence and dedication that's required to do what you do, to educate, is a supreme calling in my book. I believe it's a sacred act in many ways to guide and to teach. And so on behalf of all of those who feel the same, we thank you today. And a salute to the families. Many hardships and sacrifices to make it to this day, even for folks who look like they've had it easy. Because everyone has a story, we just don't all know it. And you've all made it to this day, and it's a good day, so I salute you, the families, the friends, the supporters of these graduates. Give yourself a hand. So today's a really good day. I brought a little bit of California with me. I hope you're feeling it. It looks like giant wings. Everyone's fluttering like they're pamphlets. It's just it's really a beautiful sight from up here. Um, but it's a day that I reflected on as I made the journey across country last night. It, it, it became a bit of a significant journey for me, and I didn't really expect it to be, actually. I was looking forward to being here with you, of course, but today is a dream come true in many ways that I couldn't have foreseen. I think my trip tells the story. So I left my offices in Los Angeles last night at about 6 p.m. to make my way to Cornell. It ain't easy to get here, folks. <laughs> So I have three small buildings in Los Angeles that I was able to buy with the money that I saved making a children's fantasy movie that I love making. I took that money and I fulfilled one of my personal dreams to create space for artists to congregate, communicate, and create. And so that exists and I'm very proud of it. It's a long-held dream. But as I slowly journey here through various planes, trains, and automobiles, other parts of my current life were revealed to me as dreams I never had dreams that I had not declared. Um, I left my office, I packed my bag, I drove to LAX where a man who worked at the airport told me, yo, I just saw your movie on DVD. It came out a couple days ago. I never heard of you before, but my daughter, she's watching the DVD commentary. I see you got the hair, it's you. What are the odds that you're standing right here in front of me today? I never heard of you since yesterday. <laughs> I said, the odds are low, <laughs> but we beat them, and we're here, and thank you. And we had a nice little chuckle, and that felt nice. I boarded the first of my two planes to Ithaca, landed in Detroit at 5 a.m. this morning. In the lounge, the woman at the counter that kind of checks you in says, I love your show, Queen Sugar. It's respectful to the real lives of black people. It's just wonderful, older woman. Gosh, thank you, man. You reminded me of my grandmother. It made me feel good. I went to get some cereal. This is really true. The man next to the granola says, Why God? Thank you for 13. I said, I learned a lot from the documentary, and I don't even watch documentaries. I said, I'm glad you watched, and thank you so much. I'm glad you dug it. You dug it. Spread the word. Spread the information. He says, I will. I landed at the, at the airport. I get whisked here. 
But as I'm going along, there was a, a black man who worked in the airport who quietly said as I passed, almost didn't hear him if I didn't look him in the eye, read his lips, love some. This trip has reminded me how far the life that I live now is from what I imagined for myself when I sat in that chair at UCLA 23 years ago. I never dreamed of a, tri a trip like this. A journey across the country where folks would recognize some of my work in small and kind ways. A day when I'd be asked to stand before you in this prestigious place. A day when I'd be working in film as a creator of visions with my voice, what I want to say embedded in images, telling stories that people remember somehow. I never thought of a day like this. I never declared that a day like this could or would exist. The numbers never supported it. I'm from Compton. I'm a woman. I'm black. I didn't go to film school. The odds that I would be doing what I'm doing are infinitesimal. And yet I stand here before you as a filmmaker as you stand on the edge of your future in a place where in the past it would have never been imagined by the founders of this institution that I would or could stand here and speak to you in this way. mental capacity to stand in her position. I'll just say that these strides, these strides, I love what they represent. It makes me feel good to be able to stand in these spaces that weren't originally carved for us, where for so long, so many decades, centuries in fact, folks on the margins have been absent. But I have to tell you, I really hate the word diversity. I love what it represents, but I don't like that word. Feels like medicine. I'm gonna go do some diversity. Take your diversity. It's like, ah, I really don't like it. It's a disconnect for me. It's an emotional disconnect because inclusion is emotional to the people who are excluded. Belonging is, belonging is an even closer word to what I like to express and share with people because we all know what it feels like not to belong to something. No matter the privilege you enjoy in society, even on a personal level, everyone is not belonged in some way, shape, or form. You all belong to this place, and we all belong to this moment. And as a student of history, what gives me hope in these tender, uncertain times for many is the knowledge that there's precedent, precedent for everything that everyone is experiencing, personally, culturally, socially. To be hopeless is to disregard history. It's to foreground the present moment in a distorted way, one that's pedestrian and unelevated. For we know that the world isn't only happening now, everything has happened before, and everything will happen again. The Africana Studies Building is a target of arson here in the 1970s. Months ago, racially motivated attacks occur on this campus. History is our guide and our leash. We can decide which. Will we be informed by the past to shift and recalibrate, mature and blossom, or will we simply repeat and retreat to what has already occurred? We must declare which. It's imperative to consider the past as you embark on your immediate future, a future that many say starts this weekend. But we know better. We know that you're on a journey of many steps. Some yours, some not. We know that our future isn't all under our control. Our future is bound up with other people, and it's tied to the time that we're in. A friend told me something that I really took to heart. We only control two things, how we prepare for what will happen and how we will respond to what will happen. Everything in the middle is unknown. I hope you leave here or now, more prepared than when you arrived, ready to respond to the moment that you're meeting. It's a vibrant moment, to say the least. You've seen in your own lifetimes how things have changed. You're graduating during times that will be long remembered, to say the least. <laughs> Nothing is even as it was a year ago. There are cracks and fissures in the surface of everything we once knew. We can see that as brokenness, or we can see it as room, as space, to create a new How? This is a time when good people become better, I believe. 
You can choose heartbreak, despondency, fear, silence, or you can choose to declare yourself and respond accordingly. Me, I'm a black woman filmmaker from Compton who traveled here to tell you that whether you're a woman of color like me or a cis white man, whether you consider your sexual and gender identity, your physical abilities, your political views, your faith or lack of, your nationality, or whether you decide to reject all of that, declare who you are now to yourself today. Decide what matters to you. Allow that to grow and change, but understand where you are within yourself right now, graduates. Before you go out into the world, map yourself, track yourself, be led by dreams and ways of being that you never dreamed, journeys you never expected, days like the ones that we're having today, fully present and alive. Someday, someone will tell the story of our lives if we're lucky. The words of yours will read somewhere in there. They graduated from Cornell in 2018. Today, you decide what comes after. It will list your jobs, your hobbies, your activism, your loved ones. What will be your story? Your movie. You're the director. You're free to experience and interpret this life from this moment as you decide, as you declare. <coughs> Toni Morrison once wrote, the choice you may make will change or simply elude you. But being your own story means you can always choose the tone. It also means that you can invent the language to say who you are and what you mean. I'm a teller of stories and therefore an optimist, a believer in the ethical bend of the human heart, a believer in the mind's disgust, fraud, and its appetite for truth, a believer in the ferocity of beauty. So from my point of view, which is that of a storyteller, I see your life as already artful, waiting and ready for you to make it art. I journeyed here today because I wanted to see you. I wanted to welcome you into this new phase of your life. I wanted to ask you to clarify, amplify your voice, to declare yourself deeply. I look forward to watching. I thank you all for whatever is to come for you. Onward, and congratulations. Thank you.